there, it's Ben Housel here, and here in this tutorial we're going to have a look at how we work with this red laser pointer plugin to Final Cut Pro 10. a super simple plugin, um, but basically if you're a lecturer or prof at university and you are used to teaching uh, in a classroom, uh, then you may be used to having a kind of red laser pointer that you point up onto the screen, um, and if you're adapting your slides to, to kind of work online, uh, then this will allow you to kind of recreate that same effect, um, but in Final Cut Pro 10. We're also going to have a look at a couple of other things so you can see here I've got the laser pointer working here but we have the M cam rig uh, plugin as well um, that you can install for free uh, in Final Cut Pro 10 and kind of leave all the links for that below um, and then I also have this custom rectangle plugin which I built and I'll leave the links for that uh, below as well so if you're trying to you know adapt your slides and try and do different things with them then these may be useful as well but we're going to dive right in here and have a look first of all at how to um, create this laser pointer animated effect so you can kind of move around and highlight different areas of your slides so I'm going to grab uh, these images and actually we'll just grab my entire timeline here and I'm going to copy it to a new project and then we'll delete what we have up on screen so so basically I want to paste these in but I'm going to remove um, all of the the plugins and stuff that we're using here so first of all you'll need to go to the link for the red laser pointer below um, which you'll find on uh, my Gumroad site uh, it's free and basically download that once you've kind of added it to your cart and downloaded it um, then you can find it in your uh, downloads folder uh, on your desktop so you should see the downloads folder and what we're looking for once we've got this uh, zip file downloaded um, is a specific folder where we put all our Final Cut Pro 10 plugins so under movies and motion templates generators and then in here I've got the name Ben's Generators but you can actually create a folder of your own name if you want and we're going to drag this laser pointer file and it's in here that we want to unzip it so basically once you've got that zip file in there we can double click on it and basically that will unzip that file in the motion uh, generators folder and we should see it in Final Cut Pro so if we jump into Final Cut Pro now um, and we come to our generators We'll see here under my generators uh, the laser pointer, which is what we've just installed. And basically, this is super simple to use. So I'm going to drag this down to my timeline here. And actually, we'll use the shortcut Shift and Z just to kind of zoom into the, the whole timeline here. So you can see the, the laser pointer right in the middle here. And to get this on screen controller, which allows us to move it around, we just need to highlight the laser pointer over here. So if we come back to the beginning of our clip here, we can move the laser points to where we want to start and what we want to do here is enable keyframes so that we can kind of do this animation in Final Cut Pro 10. So you want to make sure that you've got the inspector showing up on the right hand side here. So I'm going to go to window, um, show in workspace and make sure my inspector is checked, which it is, we can see it up there. And we want to add keyframes uh, for the center here. So basically this is what we're animating, the position of our laser pointer. So I'm going to add a keyframe there. Now. One really important thing when we're animating in Final Cut Pro, if we want to hold on a certain point, then I'm going to play through. So we're talking about this little bug number three here on screen, and then we want to move to bug number four. But before we do that, I want to fix the location here. And the reason for doing that is that um, I don't want any animation to happen between these two points. So actually just by giving this a little wiggle and kind of almost moving it back to the same spot, we're going to add another uh, keyframe here and you'll see that in a second. So now if I move ahead just a little and then move my laser pointer, you can see now we get a little bit of animation from there to there. So basically what's happening here, if we right click on our clip in the timeline and go to show video animation, is we're creating these keyframes. So I've got a keyframe right at the beginning here across on the left. And then the reason I kind of did that wiggle um, around this point was so that the, the keyframe is added here, which is holding the position of that laser pointer between these two points. So basically we don't want any movement, or if we have any movement, just a tiny bit of movement um, between those two points. So it's almost going to be kind of unnoticeable, that little shift that we've got of the laser pointer. So then we get the animation across the bug. And you can see here now when I pause it, because I'm going to move to bug number five, if I give this a little wiggle, 
it adds that keyframe in there which is going to hold the position of that laser pointer between these two points. So now I'm going to play through again and I want to quickly jump down to bug number five and we can keep going around here. So basically uh, if I come to my timeline, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit, um, I can stretch this out a bit more and so you can see we can keep kind of adding in these holds. So if we're talking about bug number five and specific characteristics of it in our lecture, then we can pause it and we can highlight the whole layer again. So you need to have it highlighted yellow so you can kind of add the keyframes. So we've added that hold keyframe there and then we'll play forward again. We want to animate to bug number six, hold there, and then we're going to come back around to bug number one around about here. So I'll do a little wiggle and play and then we can come up here. Now if we want to be more accurate with our holds and um, we can add the keyframes up here but actually when you're creating these kind of quick animations it's much easier to um, do it all with the on-screen controller once you've set up that first uh, keyframe because accuracy may not be 100% important. Um, you can see um, basically we have that hold and then as it's playing through in the timeline we're holding again on bug number five and then we get the animation between those two keyframes now to bug number six, another short hold while we talk about bug number six and then we move round to the beginning again back to number one. Okay, so that is really simply how to use the laser pointer plugin. Now one really important thing here is if you do want to make adjustments um, to any of these positions, you want to make sure you move between the keyframes. So we don't want to add uh, lots and lots of keyframes. So if you right click again and kind of show the video animation, you want to make sure that if you make little adjustments here that you add them in the keyframe. So if we kind of do something here, then you'll notice we get some weird kind of animations happening because we've accidentally added a, another keyframe over here. So if I want to delete that keyframe, I can right click on it and delete the keyframe. So the video animation kind of element here is super useful. Um, and then if I want to make sure I'm on a keyframe, um, using these navigation buttons up in the inspector will allow me to kind of move between those different keyframes. So that's how to use the, the laser pointer plugin. Let's jump in and have a look at how to use the um, cam rig plugin. Now for this, um, it is a free plugin, but you will need to install uh, the M installer on your computer. So there's an account to kind of sign up for and all that kind of stuff on Motion VFX. But um, I'll just show you um, how it can be really useful. So we'll grab the laser pointer again. And this time we're going to start our laser pointer up at the top of the microscope here. And we will add our keyframes across here for the center. And then we'll play this through. So we're holding, we're talking about something specific to do with the, the microscope. I'm going to pause it. I've got my keyframe set up, so I'm just going to give this a little wiggle, a play forwards, and then we're going to come down to what's under the microscope here. Okay. So at this point, I want to come up um, and grab my M cam rig plugin. So what I can do here is when this is playing through, I'm going to get my animation down there in a second. And then once I've moved down, if I come to M cam rig, okay, basically this is going to allow me to actually zoom in on a particular part of my screen. So you can see it's zooming in on his armpit there. So I want to actually center that uh, right here. So basically we can have a kind of punch in to a particular location on our screen and then when we get to the end here it's going to kind of punch back out. Okay, So we can control the hold, um, we can hold it for longer um, or we can take off the out animation Okay, and basically it allows us to kind of zoom in and zoom out um, of these kind of slides as well as highlighting different elements of them. So you can see with the animation out taken off there it just kind of jumps back to the slide. So I probably do want that on here. So we'd animate out, okay, and then grab our laser pointer, give it a little wiggle, and then we're gonna move down to here. Okay, so 
move down, zoom in, hold, and then at the end we'll punch out again and then animate down to the little controller on the side of the microscope there that I'm sure has a proper name but I don't know what it is. So again the M cam rig uh, is super useful if you want to kind of actually move in a bit further um, to your slides to kind of highlight something. So let's have a look at one other thing. So we'll come to this little section at the end. So there's another plugin that I generated which you can find on my Gumroad site but I'll leave a link below as well and that is this uh, custom rectangle. So basically we can drag this down to the timeline and with this rectangle um, we can control it by using the position uh, tool here, the motion tool. Uh, we can control the roundness of the rectangle, we can control the, the kind of width and the height of it and we can also control the the width of the border of it as well. So if we wanted to highlight something more specifically here, then you can see we can do that um, with this plugin. And when we're animating with our transform controls here, we can do that animation um, right here. So basically, um, if we wanted to animate this uh, from position to position, um, we can do that and add our keyframes here. So if we have this I'm going to actually do this slightly differently. I'm using Alt and the right square bracket there to just trim that layer down to that point. And now I'm going to do Command T to add transitions at the beginning and end. So basically that red block is going to fade in. Uh, and then we'll also add the M cam rig up here as well. Okay. And basically now with M cam rig here, if we highlight it, turn off our motion controls, we can get it to kind of punch into that highlighted area as well. So you can see with these different layers, we can create some real nice kind of highlights for different things that we're working on here. And obviously we can layer things up more and more in Final Cut Pro if we want to uh, kind of get that more detailed control. Now there's a lot of uh, other control that you've got in MCAM rig as well. Um, so we've got uh, some things like Y rotation and X rotation. So we can actually rotate these slides around and it will actually create a little bit of uh, depth of field as well uh, when you're doing this as well. There's lots of different kind of levels of control here. But basically um, you can use it simply um, for this sort of punch in and punch out um, and then also we can control how far we actually zoom into our slide with this camera Z position option that we've got here. So basically we can punch in and then punch out at the end um, or turn off our animation if we want to let it run to the end. So there's a few different ways in which we can highlight slides or lecture slides in Final Cut Pro 10. Um, obviously we can overlay type over this as well and stuff like that. Um, but this will be really useful if you want to kind of have that control over the animation of something like this laser pointer. Um, oh, also for the laser pointer as well, um, we have the opacity uh, built in there so we can change the opacity of that too. So if you want it to kind of blend in a bit more with the background layer and show the image in the background as well, then you can kind of keep the opacity down. So you can see here, I've left it 75% transparent. So we're seeing a bit more um, of the image behind as we're moving the laser pointer around. It's got that kind of fuzzy edge there, which we can also modify up here as well. So if we want a bit more blur on the edge, we can kind of add more blur um, to the edge too, okay? So hopefully that's helpful. Um, if you have any questions about these plugins um, or about anything in Final Cut Pro 10, then please do leave a comment below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.